Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I. PDNG doing political commentary for the media speaks. Unbelievably funny day. Uh, not the least of which is I came home and managed to cut myself shaving right before I went on air. How freaking great is that? And uh, by then I'd already posted that I was going live at 5 a.m. So no, I am, I bleed for you and my loyal listeners. This is absolutely hilarious. That's all right, because nobody in their right mind really watches me anyway. Although a lot of people have hated me so much that they have wanted to watch me bleed. And this may be, in fact, their chance to get to do so. Um... I'm going to be going to a lot of serious news, even though uh, I'm now in a rather uh, laughing mood. That looks good. Uh, high def up there. You can see me bleed in H def. Low def, you're going to get screen share, so you might be spared. I guess that'd be like the NR17 rating. You guys, you're totally PG. WND.com, Syrian surge, refugees flood into U.S. at rate of 358 per week. This is a terrible idea in every possible way because there is no reasonable way for us to be able to vet all of these people. There simply isn't any way for that to happen. We cannot keep track of who they are. So what they're doing is they are speeding up the vetting process. That is, they are lying about who it is it's safe to come in. Now you might argue, well, they're going to get most of them right. And I would say, you know what? That is true. They're going to get most of them right. However, you don't have to miss a lot. Anybody notice Paris, Belgium, the massive gropings in Cologne, any, anybody at all? A flood of Muslim refugees from Syria, on average of 358 per week to be exact, is expected to arrive in the United States now, in the end of the fiscal year of September 30th. Now, this is where people on the Trump side of things falsely get called a rapist, or a rapist, excuse me, racist, and it goes something like this, that uh, all of us who are against just leaving the borders open for anybody to, to roam in that wants to, rather than do that, it would be far more reasonable to just let them all die, because libertarians and constitutional conservatives, we hate brown people, and we just want them all to die. No. No, that's not it. The truth is this. We understand that most people of most cultures of any size are by and large not a huge threat to us or our way of life. The trouble, therefore, comes in when you miss some. It also comes in in the fact that we only have so many resources. We live in a bankrupt nation that is held up by false debt and a monetary policy from the Federal Reserve that creates money on its own whim and taxes you and I on it in order for it to exist and us to pay on it a second time. Um, we don't have enough money to help everyone in the whole world. It can't be. People of a conservative mindset say, hey, we understand... Well, again, I'm not, I'm not one of the libertarians that say just let everybody die. We're not against creating a sol solid, safe zone in Syria, of which, uh, you got to remember, uh, the good guys, as it were, if there were any, the good guys here control about a third of Syria. That would include us and our allies. And about a third of Syria is safe. Move the refugees to that part of Syria, and the NATO nations can pay several hundred billion dollars to keep them safe or allow the refugees to go all over Europe and the United States and deal with trillions 
or hundreds of billions of dollars the other way. They are not acclimated to the West. They do not want to become part of the West. The West is anathema to them. Am I saying shut down all immigration? No. But shutting down the immigration that we're seeing here until we can find out who is coming is a necessity. No, I don't want anyone to die. I don't want doctors and nurses and people and, uh, and organizations that are sympathetic here to be uh, not allowed to go and help. I, I don't want that. I want them to recover from this. And again, those of you that are worshipping Putin, I don't know if you understand this or not, but Putin is part of the problem here. And I'll tell you how. His indiscriminate bombing of much of Syria, while it needed to be done to vet out the worst of the terrorists, terrorists, it has created part of the Syrian mess that we're seeing because Putin's indiscriminate bombing has sent waves of immigrants into countries. The trouble is not only immigrants and migrants and refugees are going, but people who are part of ISIS and Al-Qaeda and people who simply hate the U.S. and are part of none of those have also snuck in and they hate the West and that's where the problem is here. It is not to do with the color of their skin, it is to do with their ideology. Get that through your heads. The Obama administration has decided, it says, to implement a surge in Syrian refugees, fast-tracking the arrival of those fleeing civil war in that country to make good on its commitment to bring in 10,000 by the end of 2016. That would be this year for you uh, weekend fans. So, we're going to bring in 10,000 people by the end of the year, and we can guarantee that a few hundred of them don't want to, you know, blow up your kid at school. Prediction time, I don't buy it. The surge is needed because the administration has delivered only 1,411 in the first six and a half months of the year. Well, that would be because, that would be the fifth, the, the, their monetary year. That would be because, so far, it's been done correctly. The Obama administration scripted an answer for anyone who questioned its ability to screen Syrian refugees was that they are most thoroughly vetted of all immigrants going through an arduous process that takes 18 to 24 months to complete. But the process was taking longer than expected and making it impossible for Obama to make good on his promise to the United Nations, which he said never should have made, that's why he's an awful president, to admit at least 10,000 Syrians, potential bombers, into America by fiscal 2016. So to fulfill its promise, it goes on, the administration has now decided to expedite the process, cutting the screening period from 18 to 24 months down to three months. So this bonehead is trying to say that they can do in three months what should take 18 to 24 months. Don't worry, none of them are bombers. Trust me, I'm Obama, and I promised you things, like if you liked your insurance, you could keep it. Of course, that didn't happen, but trust me anyway. As WND, who wrote this, has previously reported, more than 98% of the Syrian refugees have been Sunni Muslims, while only 1% have been Christians. Yet it's the Christians who are being systematically exterminated in what even the United Nations has termed genocide by ISIS and other Sunni rebels. In other words, our great American president, who was born in America, even though the font type on his birth certificate wasn't created until years after his birth, our president, who would never lie to us, who is Christian and not Muslim, is allowing the Sunni Muslims, who sometimes slaughter Christians, into the country in droves, while not allowing any of the Christians who have been slaughtered by the Sunni Muslims, hardly at all, to come into the country. And yet, trust him, he's our good Christian American leader. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if it doesn't add up. Let me ask you a question. Real quick, is there anybody at all listening to my voice right now that could claim that any of what I just said, any of it at all, adds up. I'll tell you what, it doesn't add up. None of it makes any sense at all. <clears throat> the local.fr 
Air France's gay stewards rebel over flights to Iran. This is another instance where more grief, more pain and misery comes from the religion of peace. Now that Obama has lifted many of the sanctions that are on Iran, we in the West are now blessed to be able to go to Iran again. However, Iran is very likely to start killing Americans, you know, for being gay, for instance, for being there. And Obama has done nothing to address this. And you want to know why Trump says it's the worst trade deal ever? How about the, the Exhibit A right here? May I offer Exhibit A? First, the U.S. Air France, excuse me, first the Air France hostesses didn't want to wear veils when getting off the plane in Iran, which they were going to make R, or the, the West's, or any, by R, I mean the West. They were going to make France's women wear veils to get off the plane in Iran, as not to offend the Iranians. Screw the Iranians, if they don't like it, we can put our sanctions back on and not fly to your pisshole country. First, Air France hostesses didn't want to wear veils when getting off the plane in Iran. Now, gay stewards don't want to go to a country where homosexuals could face the death penalty. You know what? I think the gay thing is a very whiny movement. If you're going to be gay, be gay. I've said many times, uh, I'm straight, but I sure do love watching two women. So I'm not going to get on a moral high horse here, but I'll tell you this. You don't kill a man because he's gay. A steward from Air France has launched an online appeal against gay cabin members having to travel to Iran. It's titled, Gay Stewards from Air France Don't Really Want to Fly to Their Death Penalty in Iran. Nice name. Sure, our sexuality isn't written on our passports, and it doesn't change the way we work as a crew, wrote Lorette M. in an open letter to the French government and the CEO of Air France, Frédéric Gagri. There is an incons it is inconceivable to force someone to go to a country where this kind of where the, where his kind are condemned for who they are. Again, they find you in a hotel room, maybe they overhear something, boom, you're done, you're dead. The letter points out that homosexuality in Iran is illegal, and that's who we made a deal with. You're gonna call Trump crazy. Is illegal and comes with a penalty of 74 lashes for a minor, while adults can be given the death penalty. Let's make a deal with them. The petition on the chain, there's a link on it here, I'll put it up on HDEF so you guys, uh, low def so you guys can see it, HDEF. It's behind me here on the ever loving fact cam. The petition on change.org, which calls for gay stewards not to work on the soon-to-reopen Paris to Tehran route, has gained almost 2,000 signatures in the past few days. Everybody that works for Gay France, or Air France, it should be called Gay France. I'm sticking up for them. Don't tell me I'm not PC. I'm not. I'm still sticking up for them. Um, a gay Air France steward firm and airline's LGBT union told the local that the petition does not reflect their views. This is not an idea that we support. We cannot have lists of people based on their sexuality. If gay stewards don't want to fly to Iran, then there are around 20 other destinations where gay rights are not recognized that they should also opt out of too. No, because those other places aren't as likely to kill you as Iran it was. That is why Iran was on the damn list. I'm, people get stupider and stupider and stupider. <laughs> Moving on, um... I'm getting all kind of listeners on here. Uh, Christina Sarich, Senator Ted Cruz, protects GMOs and calls GMO labeling advocates anti-science. Now, that amazes me. We're going to do a real quick internet search here as I'm on here. We're going to look up France GMO rats. Now, they fed rats a diet of non-GMOs. And those rats lived out normal rat lives and died of normal rat diseases in the same sort of numbers that you would expect in all of normal rat dumb. The rats, thank you, the rats that were fed GMOs, however, look like this. Now, that to me does not look at all like a normal healthy rat. You can see that. I can see that. Ted Cruz cannot see that. Okay, Ted Cruz. 
to the Eyes. During a recent agriculture summit in Iowa, Ted Cruz used the words anti-science zealotry as a link to describe the viewpoint of over 90% of Americans who run GMO's label. Like Hillary, Hitlery Clinton, Cruz seems to have picked sides on the GMO debate and his name calling isn't very pretty. As S.D. Wells has said, the term anti-science is pure propaganda from Monsanto, regurgitated by Cruz, and doesn't even make sense. If health enthusiasts are anti-science, then GMO proponents are pro-gemicidal science. That means kill everyone. Hitler used science, too, to exterminate over six million innocent people. Are people who are against that type of science also anti-science? Hey, you can't argue. He was a terrible person, but his science worked for what he wanted it to, now didn't it? Cruz recently told his audience, whoever that is, great line, the Washington, through the Washington Post, if I can talk, not to let anti-science zealotry shut down GMOs. This remark came at a time when major food corporations are doing an about-face and GMO labeling is due to Vermont mandatory bill going into effect this in July. It says that he also said the anti-GMO movement is driven by hysteria. Yeah, the hysteria not to get cancer by eating poison food. Considering that so many people are against agri agrochemical companies like Monsanto, Dow, and Sagenta, and the food companies have been illegally blocking food transparency, Cruz must be expecting a hefty paycheck, mainly from these companies. Declaring such a thing is otherwise a bit of political suicide. And he said people who decide what it is they eat, they can pay for it already. But we shouldn't let anti-science zealotry shut down the ability to produce low-cost quality food for billions of people. No, the fact is the science is in and it proves that this food is poison. Anybody want to eat poison? Okay, good. And I can tell you this firsthand because my dad was pretty much a non-drinker. I want to say I saw him drunk five times in the entire 39 years that he was alive uh, during my life. He died at 69. Um, never, never really drank. Quit smoking while he was in his late 30s, early 40s. Went to Walmart. Bought all the Walmart food, bought all the processed garbage that my wife loves to eat, and guess what? Gallbladder liver cancer died, wiped out, bam, less than a year, dead. It builds up on you, little by little by little by little. That's why, among the nuclear testings and nuke plants, it's why we are seeing a massive uptick in cancers, particularly of the liver and the stomach and the throat. A lot of this is why. It's GMO foods, people. It said perhaps Cruz and Clinton can join the hearty GMO meal after they are both ousted from their political positions in the very near future. Because as Anthony Gucciardi previously reported, beyond the science, there's also the public outrage. As I've told you time and time again, we have seen massive public support across the board for GMO labeling, with mainstream polls demonstrating this. New York Times, 93% in favor of uh, labeling MSNBC, 96, Reuters and PR, 93. The Washington Compost, 95, Consumer Reports, 95, ABC News, 93. And this is as we get closer to the 2016 election, GMO labeling will continue to be a key issue that countless millions will be demanding answers on. Um, Sanders, uh, thankfully, I'm going to at least be fair where fair is due here. He is, uh, supports GMO labeling. Sanders is actually on the right side of this. And he's also in favor of small and mid-sized farms, regional food systems, and stopping the domination of the food supply by large corporations. Yeah, because the large corporations, friends, are absolutely killing us. That's why. You, you, it's very easy to look this up. And you, you know, because the only people that find it safe are the people that are tied into the industry that's telling you that it's safe to eat. Independent studies all tell you that it's going to kill you. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. I've got three stories left, so don't leave me. Don't go away. Actually, hit subscribe and hit share. How about that? I just wanted to let you know that Sticker Junkie, which you can see here, is the place to go if you want decals. If you want to make... Gary Johnson, 2016 stickers. Uh, John McAfee, 2016. You can do any of that. Donald Trump. You can do any of that.
I support any of those three. You can get those stickers, you can get them made at Sticker Junkie. And when you check out, type in Correct Views or The Correct Views, and you're going to get more of a discount because you'll listen to the show. So now you're going to have amazing stickers to get your favorite candidate elected, which should be Gary Johnson, John McAfee, or Gary Johnson, or anything else you want to put on a sticker. You can put down Sam is an idiot, and you can get that made on stickers and get an amazing deal. They'll look really good. Everybody be able to read it and know that you think that I'm an idiot. So go to Sticker Junkie. Friends, um, this is awful news. Michael Snyder, End of the American Dream, The Temple of Baal, coming to New York, will be followed by hundreds more all over the world. ISIS, when they were destroying the ancient relics of time, destroyed, among other things, a Baal monument. Baal, the worship of Baal is pretty much tantamount to Satan worship. You don't see the government rushing to recreate the great Christian artifacts or Egyptian artifacts that have been destroyed by these thugs that call themselves ISIS. No, you don't see that. What do you see? Baal worship reproduced. If you don't know who Baal is, we'll get to it. I'll listen to this. The reproductions of the 50-foot arch that stood at the Temple of Baal in Pamara, Syria, that will be erected in New York City in London next month will only be the first of many. When I first heard about this, I thought it, that it was bad enough. And then when I got the extra news on it, I realized it was even worse. As you will see below, it turns out that there are plans to put arches in hundreds more cities all over the globe. The organization behind this is the Institute for Digital Archaeology, which is a joint venture between Harvard University, tied to Illuminati and Satanism, the University of Oxford, need I say more, and Dubai's Museum of the Future, which I'll be honest, I know nothing about. The initial arches from the Temple of Baal that will be erected in New York and London as part of UNESCO's World Heritage Week. World Heritage, yeah, you know, Baal worship. In April are intended as a gesture of... A gesture of, oh yeah, a, a defiance. But ultimately, the plan is to share, I'm getting a hot smell up here, I think uh, my lights are running really hot, I'm making sure I'm not catching myself on fire, um, a gesture of defiance, but ultimately the plan is to share the cultural treasure with as many cities around the planet as possible. Yeah, the treasure of Satan worship and child sacrifice. It just smells warm here, I might just be uh, it hitting that wall. If you go to Times Square in New York or Trafalgar Square in London late last month, you will not be able to miss three giant arches. And according to the New York Post, they will be 48 feet high and 23 feet wide. That's almost as big as Chris Christie. The life-size model of the original 2,000-year-old structure known as the Arch of the Temple of Bell will stand approximately, again, 48 feet, 23 feet wide, if will be one of two constructed in China for exhibition, likely in Times Square and London's Trafalgar Square, as part of World Heritage Week this past April 16th, said Roger Micro, Executive Director for the Institute of Digital Archaeology. Now listen to this, people. This is rather disturbing. He writes, I suppose it's appropriate that these giant arches are going to be made in China because it seems like almost everyone is being made over these days. But these are not the only giant arches that are going to be made. From the same article, uh, they plan to put approximately 1,000 version of the arches in cities throughout the world. What if you wanted to put 1,000 crosses in 1,000 cities across the world. Look at this. If you're anything like me, this is extremely disturbing development. Baal worship, it says, is definitely not something that we should be celebrating as a society, and there are good reasons for it. It's the reasons why God of the Bible punished it so, and found it so incredibly repulsive. What we know is, uh, of course, they would have major sex acts, sex acts, and that's all anybody knows. Yeah, Baal worships sex. The whole community would come out and all of the best pagan ideas for success and crops and fertility were promoted. Um, this has been um, 
respected by people such as Mick Jagger, the despicable Madonna, the guy posing, I say, as Paul McCartney. Uh, the people danced around the Asherah pole, which was nothing more than a phallic symbol, and it's quite possible that they function somewhat as poles in what is called the gentleman's I don't believe in that, it's saying it's like a strip pole, but that's not what's important. The, the sex isn't such a big deal. This is what's important. Um, because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned incense unto other gods whom neither they nor their fathers had known nor the kings of Judah and have filled this place with the blood of innocence. They were killing people in Baal worship. It was not just a wild orgy of fun. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not nor spoke it, neither came into my mind. So, we now are going to build 1,000 monuments to Baal. Why in the world would that be okay? Alright guys, that brings us to the last two stories we have, as sometimes happen, I am swarmed with the dumdies. That can only mean one thing. You're going to get two dumdies today. For those of you that don't know, I do the dunce cap of the month, once a month. You get dunce caps mailed to you, you get a special, special certificate telling us, uh, telling you why you want it. Um... You can't get to them all, friends. So you, what do you do? Well, you do two on one show, like I'm about to do here for these two idiots. Hence the theme music. Professor says, all lives matter. Flyer is an act of intolerance. Now, white supremacists, supremacists are despicable people because they don't care about anybody but the white race. Black Lives Matter supporters are equally despicable because they don't care about anybody with the black race. This is how you divide a nation based on things that don't matter, like color, so that you can take all of their freedoms. You can move their jobs overseas. You can do all of that and more. You can destroy the healthcare industry so that nobody that had insurance can have it. For what? You don't care. You're worried about what color someone's skin is. The phrase was scrawled, All Lives Matter, on a flyer and posted on the door of a faculty member's office in American University's Washington College of Law, and it's creating a huge controversy. It's from the Washington Post. The situation prompted professors at the law school and the dean of pen letters to students and staff about the March 4th incident. All Lives Matter messages is white supremacist hate speech and accused the messenger of harassment and intimidation. No, that's not what happened. Let me tell you exactly what happened. People that knew that all lives matter got really, really sick and tired of hearing this bastard talk about black lives matter. So they gave him a note to say what they thought about it. They weren't against black people. They were against only black lives mattering. That's what they were saying. So they tried to turn that around, and no, you don't, instead what you get is the dumbie of the day. And he gets it because he's a professor. The school's over-the-top reaction caught the attention of Gail Harriot and Peter Carsonow, two members of U.S. Commissions of Civil Rights, who chastised school leaders for nonsensical letters. Washington College of Law Dean Claudio Grossman first alerted students to the very disturbing incident that occurred last spring break, noting that the flyer was left on the door of a faculty member with a national reputation for doing important work on issues of racial justice in the criminal justice system. No! If you are a black man and you try to resist arrest, you will get a beatdown. If you are a white man and you resist arrest, you are still going to get a beatdown. The problem is the cops giving too many beatdowns. The, the problem isn't what color of your skin is when you got the beatdown that you may or may not have deserved. The All Lives Matter sign may seem to be a benign message with no ill intent, but it has become a rallying cry for those who expose ideas of white supremacy and overt racism. No, you dumbass professor. 
No. It means that all lives matter. It means that we call your movement BS, we call you BS, and we reject you, you filthy bastard. And that brings us to the last of the dummies of the day. Um, two dummies today, because I don't want to end up with an hour and a half long show like I did last time. Way too many. Steve Watson, PrisonPlanet.com, SJWs at Social Justice Warriors, also known as Whiners. Thomas the Tank Engine is racist and sexist. Again. That's right. Thomas the Tank. Racist. And one of the most important issues of the year, social justice warriors are up in arms, having been triggered by the release of a new Thomas the Tank Engines train. And that's right, feminist social justice warriors, don't be upset with the American citizen who is a Muslim, who went to, uh, I do believe it was Dubai, and disrespected a guy that tried to hit on her and has been in prison because she's not allowed to talk badly towards men. Now, don't stand up for her let her rot in prison. Instead, fight Thomas the racist tank. I guess he's an engine. Even though the new film has been modernized, that is to say ruined, and Thomas has been given several special diverse friends of different nationalities, some think it's not multicultural enough and therefore is racist. Now, here's what's funny. If you have a black character in a cartoon, and he talks white, then you are told that the cartoon is racist because it doesn't talk like an African-American really talks. So if you have a black character in a cartoon, and he says, yo man, what up? Now you are racist because you have stereotyped black people. What most of the social justice warriors don't understand is that white people are not, by and large, racist, and we really don't care what color your skin is. There is no white privilege. We don't get any special joys by screwing over black people. If you are white trash or if you are a thug, you're not going to be able to rent the apartment. There's no racism here, and there's certainly does not need to be stupidity like this extant today. While Thomas' 13 new friends span multiple nationalities, including Mexican, Indian, South African, Italian, Scottish, that would be Mexican, how Indian, South African, yo, Italiano, Scottish, uh, <laughs> that's, oh my god, those are terrible. Social justice warriors are arguing that they exhibit cultural stereotypes such as an angry Russian and a brash American and a meek Chinese train. Either shut the hell up and watch the movie or don't. How about that? Oh my god, the Thomas the Tank Engine has gone PC and they've added an obviously female train, obviously Chinese, Indian, to fill quotas, but looks racist. It would have been racist if they hadn't put it in. Because you people do nothing but whine, which is why you're getting the dumb the other day. Some also pointed out that Thomas doesn't have any back friend, back black friends, and the film is called, get this, The Great Race. Now, I couldn't mean racing about trains. No, no, it couldn't be that. I guess Paul in the Bible was racist when he said that we have only one race. We are called to run only, one, only no one race, and that is the race. No, you know, that's, that's racist. That must have been what he meant. The idiots, excuse me, social justice warriors also, no, I meant idiots. The idiots also charge that there are only three new female trains while there are ten new male ones. Who gives a damn? They also argue that the German female train is too butch and that the female Indian train is too sexy. So it's sexist. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you prove to me that you rented the new Thomas the Train, or Thomas the Tank Engine, whatever the hell he is, then I'll tell you what. I will promote your favorite charity on this show for the next month. First five people to do it. Just to piss off the social justice warriors. And even if you hate the movie, get it on Netflix. Give it a thumbs up. Say loved it. Say never saw a better movie in my life, you social justice bastards. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, brought to you by Change of Transportation. Change, that's true. Want to get a ride somewhere? Tell Change Transportation that you heard about it on The Correct Views. You're going to go where you're going. It's probably going to be cheaper than Uber. It's going to be faster than Uber. And 
It's going to be cheaper because you said you'll listen to the correct views. So thank you for doing so. If you want to donate to the show, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. Thank you, friends. Good night. God bless.